Now knowing this microscopical uh, properties of iron, we can make a biophysical model of what's going on on the macroscopic level in MRI and link MRI measured parameters with the cellular property uh, of iron. We can follow the depletion in Parkinson's disease. So iron in the brain, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Actually, it's a double-edged sword because it's a very catalytically active iron. So it can be used for catalyzed useful thing like oxygen, uh, for example, energy production is very important, oxygen transport. But if it's present in too high concentration, it can catalyze the wrong thing to produce reactive species and then damage the tissue. So it's really about the balance. And as we get older, it's important not to retain too much iron. Exactly. The interesting thing is the brain is very careful. It's tried to import iron and to handle it very carefully. So it is imported but never exported from the brain. And with age, we accumulate it and then it can become toxic. So how do we, how do we find out whether we have too much iron in our brain? That's a very good question. I think it's still not known that this thing is not, not yet solved. Um, correlating the measurement from magnetic resonance imaging with the, how the people um, feel or uh, following the disease that may provide them or answer to that. Well, talk us through your work. Right. So what my dream is, is to provide the new methods to detect iron with the cellular specificity. So to really understand where it's bound and if it's good or bad. So we are trying to combine magnetic resonance imaging with the advanced physical methods where we know the ground true about the cellular distribution of iron to create biophysical models of MRI contrast and then apply it in vivo to extract the cellular information directly in the living human. And recently you've made some breakthroughs in this, haven't you? Uh, recently we developed a method for in-cell magnetometry of iron, so we were able in the postmortem tissue really determine the magnetic property of iron directly in the single cells. And in this way we can get insights about the chemical form of iron binding and about its toxicity. And how can we use techniques such as this for predicting or detecting diseases such as Parkinson's or Alzheimer's? So our, our idea is that now knowing this microscopical uh, properties of iron, we can make a biophysical model of what's going on on the macroscopic level in MRI and link MRI measured parameters with uh, you know, cellular property. Uh, of iron. So now we don't need to do postmortem histology, we can just measure the patient and detect the iron in their brain. And particularly for the one specific type of cells, the dopaminergic neurons, we can follow the depletion in Parkinson's disease and this could provide the very valuable markers of uh, their loss. Because currently, when the first diagnosis is made, all the neurons, almost all of them, are already gone. So it's not possible to treat the patient. And that's our hope, to detect it early so the patient could be treated. Well, thank you ever so much indeed for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Fascinating work. So thank you. Thank you so much for the invitation.